just trying to take a picture of me with some like two chinty ass girl on top of the table, ratchet ass dirty. I was trying to get RC, I was trying to get my angles done. One of those supervisors fucking caught me, being a little bitch. He didn't want to give me back my phone and shit. Well, actually, I hit my head like two or three times in a week in um, San Francisco. I just remembered hitting my head a couple of times skating, and like first one was kind of mild, and the second one I hit my head pretty hard and was like semi-unconscious. And then the third one, I hit my head at Wallenberg. I woke up like with a buddy with me like several hours later, kind of like guard dog, not guard dog, but like a blind, blind seeing dog just like escorting me through the city. And we'd walked like a couple of miles in San Francisco, and I was like, could barely see and I don't didn't really know what was going on and I know if it was because I was unconscious or what but I didn't at the time have the money to go get checked out or get a CAT scan or whatever so I eventually started getting my vision back and coming to and knowing what was going on and I think I just had a really bad concussion I've actually hit my head quite a quite a few times where I've had really scary things kind of like that happen one time in Boston I was skating a rail it was like a, a really flat skinny rail with uh, down bars it had like 45 degree angle run up so you had to kind of come around a corner and then hit the rail I grinded it and I think I lip slid it this was like on a welcome to hell tour probably like 96 I tried to smith grind fell out of smith grind to lip slide but in the Smith grind position going down the rail and immediately locked my back truck up in the down bar and then pitched me to my temple on the ground. And then when I got up, my vision was actually like crooked. So it was like I was like looking, but I saw like darkness. It was like a video camera. And I saw darkness on the top corner and the bottom corner and the vision was like crooked. And I was freaking out. I started like kind of like yelling and kind of like not knowing what was going on. Ed Templeton was there at the time too. And it only lasted like a few minutes. It was super, super scary. I don't know how your eyes send the messages to your brain. And I don't know how that's even possible, but somehow I had another concussion that, yeah, had jarred my vision and had me like seeing crooked. At first, I thought DGK was too good for me. And I love Agronica boards. Yeah, I just wanted to skate for them. I thought it was a cool, cool company. But DGK, man. Dirty ghetto kids, man. <laughs> you face it too good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess probably. Um misled youth part just because of the time you know i was like 21 or 22 or something and it was like right when that came out it was like there was a lot of hype behind that video and the big premiere at spreckles and i'd never been to a big video premiere and there's a lot of friends there you know like people were were stoked on on my part or something and i, I got like you know I, I got i was pretty excited about that i went pro right after that so the whole thing about like came out to california made this and like you know i'm part of this this team and part of this time in history or something like that just like that you know every one of them's had like special the like, things that I can pinpoint where I was really stoked on what happened but that one of course just because it's like my first you know real thing that I did you know it was a life-changing thing get something new want to put it on and then you want to show the next person like yeah my shit fresh like you see me out here like, right now I ain't got no tags on Shit's fresh though. Once I was able to be able to like get stuff on my own and fucking be fresh at the same damn time, like not my mom buying it for me, like, working for it, buying it, <clears throat> or however. So like now it's like, like yeah, I'm fresh because I'm doing this shit myself and I'm out here, so like it. One day I tried to, I don't know, I had my shoes off and I was just goofing around and I was skating a skate park and I started like just doing like small ollies and stuff and I realized everyone that it didn't hurt. And then if you do a couple of techniques, you can, you can spread your stance a little bit so you don't drag your feet on your ollies as much. You can pretty much do normal stuff and ollie the pyramid and I remember Benny Hanna in a pyramid barefoot. And then I realized that, you know, you can skate rails without ollieing very high so you can skate rails barefoot and you can ollie stuff. Back in San Francisco, I don't know, I thought like, oh, I could probably ollie the guns gap barefoot. I've already ollied it a hundred and something times in a, every day, so went there one day, met Bryce Knights there like seven in the morning and ollied it barefoot. Yeah, welcome to hell. I'd, yeah, I did, a, I did a lip slide on Oceanside High Rail. My rationale there was is that I was like, because at that time, everybody, like the magazines were filled with like nine stair rails. So it was like, everybody was skating a nine stair rail. And I thought like, oh man, if somebody like skates a bigger rail than that barefoot, then all these nine stair rails, these people will stop doing that. or it'll be like but it made me look more jacked it just made me look like i had you know was screwed up or i didn't know what i was doing or something i think i did the grind first or second try and the i remember the lip slide took 13 tries and it was brutal i quit every try every try i was like i gotta stop i should have rammed down the driver a few more years and i might have might not have hurt <laughs> but it doesn't matter because what hurts on your feet is the top of your feet and you can't run up and down the driveway on the top of your feet <laughs> 
I guess it would probably be like maybe a, a hotel case where like you get to the hotel after a signing or a demo and half or more of the crew's drunk. Even at the sixes or, or super eights or whatever, we're like, look like trouble, even though they got like crackheads and hookers staying there. Everybody's kicking it out front of their room, drinking and stuff, and it's like midnight or something. They act like they're running like a five-star hotel or something, you know? It's like, this is typical behavior for your kind of establishment here. We've just been like, you know, eight, 10 hotel rooms paid for and everything and be like, you guys gotta get your shit and get out. You know, police are on their way. Well, we don't really want that kind of trouble. So police show up, some people will go to jail. So, you know, we've had to pack up, you know, 10 hotel rooms and just get out. And at that point, it's midnight, you know, the crew's riled up and you're looking for a hotel room. And, and then some, you know, like people that aren't drinking are just like, fuck man, like, you know, I'm in this position right now where like I was about ready to go to bed or something, you know? But yeah, that, that's about it. Maybe like an arrest here and there. Yeah, yep. shit. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, like we had like the Macy signing. Like they're like, oh, Stevie, Stevie, take a picture. I'm like, like, what's up? Like, fucking every day, like, Stevie this, Stevie that. Oh, there goes a black guy from DGK. Stevie, come on, like, the guy that, that's the guy that they're looking for is Stevie, so. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm not Stevie, but I know him. I can get a hold of him. I can get you in front of him. What you trying to do? Like, just like that. Keep your head up and uh, stay away from fat bitches that like to talk shit.